Hello, hello. We have, much sooner than I expected, another new chapter of One Punch Man remake. I guess since I had gone on my big hiatus, this manga went from a schedule of just kind of whenever it was done to uh, a much more regular once every two weeks or something like that. Um, and uh, last time I read the redraw of the previous chapter, and overall I was very positive about it, very positive about the direction the, the remake was going, um, pretty excited about all the major deviations from the webcomic, and since then I took some time to actually go on the subreddit and read through the mega thread about the changes from the webcomic and the arguments being had there. And I think I understand a lot better why there's some people that aren't fans and why some people are attributing things to this uh, suddenly almost breakneck pace of once every two weeks. Um, some of the more nuanced kind of character driven things that uh, they say are being really skimmed over and replaced with just sort of flashiness. I can kind of understand that and I can also understand um, the, the, the sort of things that I focused on when I was talking about where I thought the source of the controversy was, which is really kind of blowing out the scale and significance of some of the big moments um, that people probably remember very fondly from the webcomic. What it made me realize most of all is that I, <laughs> I really don't remember the webcomic as well as I thought I did. There was a lot of scenes and lines and dialogue being mentioned by people in this thread that I was like, Oh yeah! <laughs> um, so what it made me want to do, and this is I guess kind of a little hyping you up in the audience moment, I think in the near future I'm going to record myself rereading the entire arc in the webcomic, uh, which is also nice because I can actually show the webcomic on the video. It's not copyrighted or whatever, it's just a free webcomic. And uh, we can really dive into it and, and work out you know, what makes it so memorable and so special and so exciting. And then we can talk a little bit more educated about uh, the changes in the remake. At any rate, they have indeed veered off in a complete Y, and uh, we, we are now plunging into something brand new, as Garo has had the power of God Almighty infused in himself, and has now attained the God Fist martial, martial, martial arts style. Martial arts kind of cool. And uh, really at this point I have no clue what's going to happen. Um, a whole lot of plot elements have been introduced that are extremely relevant to what's going on right now. Like the idea of God as an entity has been really expanded on from the webcomic um, as this kind of like nefarious thing that's going around handing out power and then taking it away uh, for some nefarious purpose. Uh, Blast and his compatriots one of which looks a lot like the alien Boros, and a lot of people were like, is, is Blast team made up of like defeated villains or something? I don't think it's that, I think it's just another alien in the species that Boros was from, because they were all supposed to be like insanely powerful, right? They're kind of like a Saiyan equivalent, or like a Frieza people equivalent. Anyways, anyways, uh, uh, I digress. A lot, a lot has happened, <laughs> a lot can happen. Let's see what will happen as a herald from the abyss comes together with despair the cosmic garo marching towards sayatama bangs water stream smashing fist takes knowledge of the flow of energy behind raging curtains and tidal surges and recreates those within one body putting to you into this into your fist is the secrets it's also an extension of that flow okay oh this is a nice a little homage callback to when garo was imitating watchdog man and very quickly picked up on his bizarre four-legged fighting style. Man, what's going on with Watchdog Man? When are we going to see more of him? When is he going to finally get involved? Only when City Q is threatened. Um, but geez, City Q must be threatened at this point. And here we see his uh, battle against Bomb, where again, he was just instantly picking up Bomb's techniques. Now he has gained knowledge of the flow of all energy. The behavior of all forces in the universe. All life eradication fist. Interesting, interesting. How in the world, what is going on in Garo's head right now? I honestly don't know. And at first I was even surprised that he accepted this offer from God. 
I thought, you know, just like he had the monster cells so far in the past, smack them away rudely. I don't need that. Nuclear fission. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? Uh, <laughs> the Mahjong series, where the president, or the prime minister of Japan, plays against other world leaders in Mahjong. And uh, I don't want to say too much. If that interests you at all, if you like Mahjong, and you like something that's the Mahjong equivalent of the nuclear fission fist, <laughs> you should uh, check it out. So this is pretty cool. I like how differently this is depicted than almost any other attack. It's very far outside of Murata's typical style where he's really trying to emphasize like the environmental damage, the scale, um, usually like some real detailed shots of kind of the, the muscular action. And now it's just all a wash in light and shadow. And boom, here we go. This is much more Murata-esque. Like a nuclear bomb going off. Everyone flying back. Also, thank you to the people that pointed out what the deal was with Fat Tank Top Master. That uh, it's actually the scene where... I thought it was like Fubuki and Bomb were combining their strengths to heal him. And I thought it was kind of a joke that he got like overhealed and that made him fat. But there is a shot where Pig God walks up to them and she's like, Pig God, help! And Pig God, I guess... <laughs> Never before seen has this ability to transfer his mass to another person in order to like help them out. So that's why Tank Top Master got fat. All right then. Unclear how Pig God can do this. And unclear if this is the technique he alludes to when he says it's not the prophesized time. Contamination system activated for all sessions of that. Oh! This was registered as a nuclear attack. That's bad. <laughs> That's not just like the damage of the blast, which is of course monumental, but like radiation, the fallout of it, crops being ir uh, irritated? What? What's the word I'm trying to say here? Irrated? <laughs> For generations? <laughs> oh my gosh. And he's combo attacking. The bombs don't stop going off. Psychos is alive? I'm looking pretty good. <laughs> this is looking better than I thought she would. Uh, having, you know, fused with Orochi and then stabbed with a giant psychic drill. I guess at some point her real body kind of got tossed out of that. And now she's just big chilling. Same as Homeless Emperor's energy spheres. Divine power. Yeah, yeah. But now it's divine power infused into the strongest martial artist in the world right now. And not, you know, some random schmo <laughs> that's probably frail and malnourished and underslept. And here we go. I was waiting for this. I knew this imagery couldn't be far behind. The mushroom clouds, signature of atomic bombs. And, you know, Japan obviously has a horrifically tragic past um, when it comes to nuclear weapons. No one has to say that. No one has to talk about this at all. And, and this is really the point I want to make, is that it, it really makes clear that uh, um, Japan has, in many ways, moved on iconographically. That before, you had things like Godzilla and Akira that in their own ways reckoned with the horror of nuclear weapons and used the iconography or even amassed iconography, like an, an analogous iconography with like Godzilla, to, to kind of present the devastation and the struggle in a way that wasn't like directly evocative. And now it's like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's been long enough. <laughs> now you can freely use this iconography to depict just, holy crap, it's, it's animated. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is wild. <laughs> this, is cra this is crazy. This is like something that one would do. There was panels in the webcomic, right, that were animated like this. It almost has a one sort of feeling, too, with, like, the way these people are just, like, silhouettes. And their hair is moving at that really low frame rate. Of course, the actual depiction of the, the battle and the explosions and stuff, you can see Saitama and Garo's silhouettes dancing across the clouds. 
is pure Murata, but just the kind of like sketchiness, the oikake-ness of it, really does to me remind me a lot of one. This is amazing. How are they gonna put this on the tank bond? <laughs> what on earth is fighting in there? Sensei. We haven't actually seen what's going on in the fight in a while. Not since that first punch. It's all just been reactions at a distance. It looks like Saitama just tanked it, which, no surprise. <laughs> he messed up my outfit. Ooh, Garo's talking to him. Garo hadn't been kind of chatting with him like this in a while. He was more just kind of monologuing while he tried to beat the crap out of Saitama. Spouting lines like a bad guy right before he gets instantly stomped. I feel like I can do anything now. Martial arts, their techniques called the Shake, the power of the power of nature by imitating the movements of real living things. Oh, and here we see Snack. Remember Snack? Uh, who uh, could use the snake? For example, how's this one? Mode Saitama. Does Gary even know his name? But I guess he knows everything now. He's like enlightened. Hmm. Mode Saitama. Very curious what this will be like. And then he's fighting like Saitama. He's doing Saitama's clumsy, untrained. Normal punches. Consecutive normal punches. And Saitama punches back. The fists hit each other. He's completely mirroring Saitama's style. Really just the flex, because this is clearly not the best style. <laughs> and uh, this is something that I remember um, people being very disappointed by in this changes thread. And, and I, I thought about it, and I'm, I'm kind of disappointed they didn't really emphasize this either is that Garo really does outclass Sayatama in almost every way. That Sayatama only gets by because of his unfair cheat code level, uh, endurance, speed, stamina, whatever, and strength, of course. Um, but then in the webcomic, there's the, the, a really powerful moment where Sayatama tries to hit him, and he can't, because <laughs> Garo can read his movements and still dodge. Even Sayatama's impossibly fast fist isn't enough to get past the fact that Garo has this martial arts genius. Which, uh, you know, it seemed like the manga was like kind of building up for that to be a theme. There's the whole thing about Saitama wants to learn martial arts. <laughs> martial arts is moving your body all weird-like. <laughs> Him having all these like revelations and stuff. It seemed like that theme was still gonna stay through. But in this version of the fight, it, it never really came up. Like, <laughs> uh, Saitama kind of offhand mentions Ah, uh, you know, it's tough to hit this guy. But it's not treated like a big deal. It's not treated like Saitama's having some sort of breakthrough here. Alright, so they punch in. They explode in. Whoa, he gets in a... There's like a cross hit. Shades of uh, Tomorrow's Joe. They go flying. Skidding across the ocean and plunging into the sea. They both burst out. This is the first time a summon has matched you in exchange of blows. You seem at a loss for words. Saitama's not even trying it, though. <laughs> he hasn't used the serious punch once yet. Maybe evenly matched, but the techniques I copy get home to perfection at a blazing speed. Soon you'll be able to catch up to the copy. Hmm. And on the same endless horizon of power as you, you're still concerned about that brat. So I would show that brat how pure, powerless heroes are, didn't I? So you're concerned too. There is still, as in the webcomic, this sort of interplay between Garo slowly revealing his hypocrisy that uh, in the end he's still really concerned about all the same stuff as Sayatama. He just wants to play a different role. It's not as nuanced, I agree. But this is, uh, this is cute little lines. Ooh. A gamma ray burst. Again, these, like, this nuclear arsenal, I think is kind of cool. It's like a, a, a domain of power that they hadn't really evoked yet in the series, which is exciting. Just like, you know, I remember going on and on about how Orochi had that like really draconic form 
And I was like, yeah, they'd never really done, like, dragon. Like, you know, the essential dragon before. Um, so, you, you know, every time they kind of, like, unlock a domain like this and show how strong it is relative to everything else is very exciting. A gamma ray verse is an explosion that occurs at the end of life of a massive star, largest and most powerful explosive phenomenon that has ever been confirmed in the universe. Sort of. <laughs> uh, there's a lot that happens when a star goes supernova. There is a gamma ray burst. There, there are things that produce more energy than a supernova, though. There's, like, recorded collisions of black holes where one black hole, like, rockets off at, like, 6% of the speed of light or something. I don't know. I, I, I don't know enough about this to talk, but... Uh, stars... Uh, Red giants and stuff going supernova. We've outdone that. <laughs> Holy crap, though. I don't know if anything has outdone it in this series. Are they going to show the whole Earth perspective? It's even brighter than daytime. Ha! <laughs> oh, wait! Oh, jeez! Suddenly this... Friggin' sweet mask. Better not go after our beautiful little girl here. <laughs> hmm. Kind of an exotic animal that is useful lighting up the darkness. I'm just an exotic animal. Oh! No time for that. Garo crashes down. Looking at the assemblage of... Jeez, most of the remaining hero fighting force. You know, there's Metal Bat. Zombie man, child emperor, pig god, flashy flash, uh, sweet mask, whole bunch of A class, whole bunch of B class. I'm trying to see if there's any more S class folks. Oh yeah, tank top master, big boy. Uh, Tatsumaki's still down for the count, as is Pre Pre Prisoner and, and Super Ally Darkshine and Atomic Samurai and his assistant. You can see Fubuki's trying to heal her sister. This is a great shot. I just like, there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of really well-designed characters that, when you see them all at once like this, just the contrast and stuff really accentuates things. So what is Garo going to do? At that moment, all the heroes present knew beyond a doubt that the source of that massive explosion of energy was this monster. Oh yeah, and, and uh, Bang is here. Bang recognizes his student, Garup. Is it really the hero instinct? He turned into a monster? <sighs> Nobody's sure what to do. But everyone knows it's bad. Have I finally become it? The symbol of fear that brings all heroes to despair. Absolute evil. Eh, that's pretty nice, you know. Really showing Garo, at least in his mind, having achieved his goal. I think this is important for his overall arc. That he's not just denied it repeatedly, but he can see, through experience, maybe the limitations of his worldview. Thank you. He says that to God, I suppose. What happened to you? I heard you say thank you. Did a monster do something to you? Not really. I always had my senses. Oh, okay, so now we see back to this critical moment. He actually does smack the hand away, just as I had anticipated. As if the old man would act like such a softy. Whoa, but even just touching... <laughs> He got tricked? He did just barely touch it. <laughs> if I turn into old man, he could play me like a damn Phil. How'd you do it? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. You only lost consciousness from the intense flow of power throughout my entire body. There's, there's God. There's the one we call God. Still don't know what his deal is. <laughs> Gotta ask Blast that, I guess. He once taught me something. To feel the flow of energy and become one with that flow. 
of the power of the water stream, you said. Hmm. He really has achieved a very zen state right now. Just thanking everyone. An overwhelming flow of gratitude and energy. Like nirvana. And then he's going to get his ass beat by a weird bald man. <laughs> Managed to turn into that weird thing's puppet. That's why from here on out, what I do is of my own free will. What are you going to do? Okay. This is, this is everything he wanted. This is everything he's been scheming for. Absolute power. Alright, okay. I'm not disappointed with the length or anything. Honestly, I thought it would have ended several times before this. I think this is a pretty good ending point. Sayatama is MIA. Uh, you know, he can't get knocked around, even though he's quasi-invincible, even though he won't actually get hurt. He could have been blasted to Hawaii or something. It'll take him a little bit to get back. But, uh, yeah, at this point, you know, I'm sure there's a good fight scene ahead. I'm sure he'll do some more cool stuff. But I am much, much more invested in how they're going to shake this out in terms of the characters, their personalities, their motivations, and the overall kind of, like, moral messaging of the series. Very, very interested to see where it goes in that direction. Um, but, yeah, I... I uh, I want to, I don't know when, I'm so friggin' busy, um, but when I get the chance, I want to reread the original um, Monster Association arc. I think that would be a lot of fun, and I think it would give me an even better appreciation uh, for just everything, just the whole series. It's been a long time, so uh, hopefully look that'll be sometime soon, look forward to that. And uh, let me know what you think about what's going on about this whole thing. It's, it's a very in-debate topic, and I think the debate is really, really interesting. Um, I think there's lots of good arguments. Uh, as I said last chapter, in the end, what I want to see most from the series, where I think it most uniquely excels, is in Murata's art, and Murata's depiction of power and fights and choreography. Um, so on some level, that's what I care about most. But I still don't want to see, like, the, the characterization and the messaging and all those other, like, really interesting parts be done dirty and sake for the sake of, of uh, the action scenes. Because I really think we can have both. But the action scenes have been fantastic. So, I don't know. I don't know. I have a lot of opinions. Uh, we'll talk more in the future in two weeks, I guess. So, see you then. And see you for Monster Association reread. Bye-bye.